Well, thank you. So, hello everyone. I'm Alicia Knighton and I'm an ecosystems engineer in Honeycomb. So today we'll talk about the beautiful world of observability, feature flagging, and how their partnerships can together can make your life much easier. So I'm going to start off by just level setting definitions. And so what observability is, is being able to ask questions about your environment without having to know ahead of time what you want to to ask or even what you want to know. So it's all about discovering your unknown unknowns. And through observability, you can address issues um, that impact customers, safely do experiments, implement optimizations, prom promote knowledge transfer and things like that, um, uh, even across team boundaries. And my favorite part is just to better manage risk of stakeholders um, and support them. This way, um, when you're looking at things, Things happen and you should have an opinion about them and a way to understand them through both a customized way with your business context and an automated way. And the second element of this is feature flagging. So some people call it feature flagging, feature toggling, however you look at it, but it allows you to release um, functionality to a set of users safely. And most times it's used with canary releases, A-B testing, and it's really a way to decouple your releases and deploys. So feature flagging is really a way to say, hey, let's release this feature uh, for some users that we've defined without disrupting others. You wanna be able to deploy all the time um, and make small delta changes. So push out things as fast as possible to normalize the deploying um, deploying, and to make it not seem scary. So um, a term that I hear all the time is just like boring deploys. They're so easy to do and they're so frequent. And so that's what you wanna be able to do. Um, but as you're pushing out and pushing out and pushing out, your users don't want that. <laughs> Who wants to log in constantly um, seeing a changing system in a non-meaningful way? If a user logs in and the button has changed 75 times in about a week, I mean, that's exhausting. And for a user, it's mentally exhausting and visually nauseating. And so putting things behind feature flags allows you to um, safely deploy, make certain decisions and to target those people that you actually want to target. And so in all of that, um, there's a partnership. There's a, I say a partnership because it's, to me, it's more of a, a serious relationship on both sides. So merging observability and feature flagging lets you see what happens in those isolated populations. Um, and keep in mind that you should remember that tool fatigue is hard and it requires a lot of investment. So using observability and feature flagging um, is going to, have uh, a level of commitment in creating success, success with your deployments and your interactions um, with your users. And so with observability, you get insights on your users and your systems real time. With feature flagging, you get to see a particular thing um, or show a particular thing to a group of users um, at an interval of your choosing. So most times someone will introduce a new feature and say, hey, uh, let's do this thing for two weeks and see what happens. Um, but that's it with a feature flag. So if you merge those things together, then you get to tease apart who sees what, when, and understand how it is for a group. Um, and when you do that, you start to um, bring some meat and potatoes and some life into uh, what you're actually investing your time in to create. And I said something about uh, tool fatigue, and that's important because um, introducing something new, like observability, feature flagging, and those things. They're new things, they're new concepts, and uh, for some people, and for some people, it's not. And if you ever think about a time where uh, a new team or just some other, someone on your team or a new team, sister team, or whomever, raved about a new thing, and you tried it, and it sucked so bad, like so bad. It was either hard to use, the features could have been better, um, or something like that. Uh, we should want our teams to find use and not worry about what we implement. And so when you're thinking about observability and feature flagging, think about those standards, think about how it can impact 
everyone because when delivering features, there's actually multiple teams that are involved. Um, it's more than just product teams or engineering groups that rely on understanding deployments and user delight. So be ready to commit to speaking a common language with your technical and non-technical teams, such as like marketing, CS support, et cetera. So I've said all of these things and they seem great, but Alicia, how it works. So let's go through that. So I will go through just an um, example of something I've seen before. So implementing a new feature. So we start off there, right? So product decides to create a new feature based on some customer feedback. That's nothing new. Engineering develops the feature and places it under a feature flag. Um, at that given time, product then can collaborate with customer success or sales or whomever to gather information on which customers should join. And then observability is used to um, understand and drive those data-driven decisions. So most times um, you create a feature based on a few things. Uh, Sometimes it's from customer feedback to drive a new feature. Sometimes it's from whatever um, is going on with um, competitor analysis or whatever it is. Um, but you want to have a new feature and iterate over it until it's ready for mass consumption. And you want to highlight people who actually can uh, benefit from this. Um, there's no benefit in allowing people who have no interest in the feature to uh, drive how your feature works, if that makes any sense. And so in all of that, by using telemetry to associate uh, with the feature uh, behind that flag, you can use custom attributes, which are essentially uh, a key and a value in telemetry, which your business um, context to see real time what's happening with a feature. So I want to show you, uh, let me see if I can zoom into that picture a little bit better. Um, I want to show you exactly how what that looks like and how that works. And so here uh, there's a graph here. And basically what we're looking at, we uh, behind a feature flag, we decided to, hey, let's deliver a feature. And with this feature, we're looking at some custom contacts, which is the plan name. So um, at my company, um, it's important for us to know um, if you're, what type of customer you are. So if you're enterprise, if you're not enterprise or whatever the case is. And so we drive that context to create readable context for people to ask questions. So beyond just engineering, um, a PM may wanna know how well this is doing. And so, or who's using it. And we gather that information to decide, okay, should we stop this experiment when letting everyone use it? Or should we do something else with it? And in this example, um, I highlight, um, what is this, January 24th? On January 24th, we went from, hey, let's, let's see how everyone reacts to this. Um, marketing has done a great marketing pitch um, to show the beauty of uh, this new feature. Let's everyone join and let's see what type of traction we get. Um, and we started monitoring not only just um, who's using it, but actual performance. And then we decided from there, uh, this was feasible to switch, um, switch it off to just enterprise and allow people to go off into a trial version. And so um, at some point um, at the bottom there, you see uh, different levels of plans, but it's important to know you see free and, um, and trial. And so we switch from if you don't fit that enterprise umbrella to putting you into trial. Um, that way we can evaluate people at um, using real context. And anyone can, anyone can then look at that telemetry data to say, okay, this is what's happening. This is how well we're doing. This is how we can drive impact. And the second part of this is, um, so behind a feature flag, we're looking at um, a group of people. And now we're looking at uh, certain features. And so in here on the far left, um, we use a team slug and that also allows us to know specifically which customers. And then um, after, and this is in that red box. And then on the right side there, there's different features. And so when looking at each team, we can see what customers are doing um, and how the features impact them. And also do we make the right bets? And so uh, with us having service map, if we add a new feature, who's using it? <laughs> like, should we invest more time in this? Um, are, are customers confused about this? 
are they uh, using it in ways that um, are not uh, what we've identified as desirable? That might be okay. We may need to change how we're thinking or how we or how we actually promote to people how to use that feature. So um, you know your telemetry is right uh, when it has that business context um, that you can use for insights. And so I should be able to go to anyone in sales, be able to go to VP, be able to go any, anywhere and say, hey, let's look at this telemetry data together to determine what we can do here. And so um, with that, it's important to know the village impact. It takes a village to deploy a product successfully. And so um, I'm going to just walk through um, everyone on these bullet points just to kind of get a sense of like, how does that work, right? So um, if a user is having an issue, um, we could pinpoint out what tier they're, tier they're on based on what I showed you. And then specifically um, who they are um, and what to do about it. And so if you're X tier, I may need to talk to a customer success person, or I may need to gather a salesperson or whatever that is. Um, the cool part about it is we can be proactive if we want to, because we have this real time telemetry data. Also, the other cool part about it is now we can get people like support who are getting these tickets um, from customers who are maybe they were in the trial version or maybe they're X tier. Um, they can bring forth the information to the right people and we can get analytics on this subset of people. Um, they're having issues and we know it because not just because of data, but we're having issues because they're bringing in tickets and we can loop that back into docs or, or back to CS or sales or wherever we need to be able to get them where they need to go. So there's different life cycles in delivering um, your features. And so um, let's just say that feature was officially released. So marketing now is able to see if the campaign they created paid off or do they need to adjust it based on traffic. Um, marketing, can, marketing can actually decide, okay, this makes sense. Um, we have the visibility here and we're touching the right personas are, oh, we're actually getting um, other people who we didn't think about or other customers who we didn't think about so we can drive more adoption in the right places. Or we place bets a little bit differently so we can adjust real time. Um, the faster you can get to solving your issue or the faster you can get to helping yourself, the better it is and the better you can translate that. Another cool part about this is that product managers can actually use this to understand if the feature is actually um, creating um, what they consider to be, um, I guess, valid for them. So are we spending time on the right features? Okay, I understand why it's not work, why these features are not working, or let's actually do break fix work. Um, sometimes uh, product has the tendency to say, hey, why are you not um, actually working on my feature? And now the data is there, so they have an understanding of the things that are happening. Keep in mind, um, Observability is all about your systems. And so you can put observability around just about anything to understand it. And uh, last but not least, you have customer success and they can now look at who's using the feature. So customer success has the tendency to work with enterprise customers. So now since everything's group, they can look at the trial of the non-enterprise user and understand who to target in collaboration with sales um, based on who's using the feature, who has interest. Um, if there's minimal, if there's actual minimal usage for an enterprise account, now they can figure out, okay, maybe we need to train this person up. Maybe they don't know about it. How can we drive impact that way? Um, by having the merge of um, open telemetry plus feature flagging, now you can drive the adoption you're looking for. Um, there's other aspects to the life cycle, right? So outside of just, hey, we're delivering something, life happens. And so you can use telemetry for things like um, tech debt, cleanup. You may have a new agent that a customer is using. Add telemetry to that to identify the customers and the version. You can combine that with alerting to notify your team. Hey, no one's using it. Let's retire it. Also, um, it's no longer 
a need and we don't have to monitor it. And then sometimes we have an experiment um, and we decide that the experiment is not worth it. Since you already have that context right in your telemetry data, you can pull that information to figure out, okay, uh, what feature are people using that we need to um, safely decommission to get rid of that low hanging fruit? And the fun part about it is anyone internally can see it and the whole team can be proactive. So with all of this information, now um, everyone effectively has a bit of superpowers. And so observability and feature flagging um, provides and allows us to be inquisitive about the questions around us. Every person involved um, in delivering features should be given the opportunity to understand what is going on with the application um, so that people can be able to do their jobs and to help out each other. You know, it allows us to actually raise awareness and be insightful um, in the life cycle um, about the various elements in the life cycle. And at the end of the day, um, everyone is involved in making a feature a success and they should be able to speak to the same language. I should be able to raise my hand no matter who I am and be able to speak to something I'm working on, or I should have enough empowerment to be able to go and look for that myself versus waiting on engineering to tell me something versus waiting on product teams to tell me something. If we all use the same tool and we make sure the language is there and we have standards around what we're using, then it becomes very impactful um, and very powerful powerful for us to move in the same given direction. Um, so in summary, observability and feature flagging, it supercharges your knowledge of deployments. Um, it produces meaningful results uh, for real-time decision and it strengthens the team beyond engineering. So now you can understand the status of a feature. It is more than just who's using it, but it's really about um, the user pain. And so most of the time users have pain that we can either understand and sometimes we don't understand, but that telemetry can bring you right there to fumbling through, okay, who is this? What's going on? Oh, you can put these things together um, to understand without context switching so much. and. User pain is just as performance impacting <laughs> as a bug. Um, because if a user has an issue, um, you have an issue, especially if it's a customer who is, um, however you've identified them. Um, so if they are a strategic customer or if they're elite customer, however you identify that, if they walk away um, because they're feeling the pain, I can guarantee you several people are also gonna walk away because they are, experiencing that pain as well. And I can bet you your bottom dollar also that if your user experience in that, their CS is hearing that, all the field engineering is hearing that. And so they're getting that pain as well. And so we need to know if the feature is making, uh, if the feature is the right decision with real data, real time data, not, um, a sandbox environment, but real things that we can see. And if you have that, then you have provided meaningful context and you can supercharge yourself into um, being in a good solid place with your instrumentation and with your telemetry data and with your feature flagging and also a good place with your coworkers because that's also important for them to know what's going on. And so um, this has been my short presentation on supercharging um, with observability and feature flagging. Thanks for joining.